y'all. We're in Pinson Mounds, Tennessee today for the uh, Pinson Mounds 2022 Archeo Fest. This is just about 10 minutes south of Jackson, so we're going to walk around and show you what's here. Uh, it's just me talking today. Tara has lost her voice, so uh, yep, there you go, right there. So you'll be hearing from me all day today. First thing we're going to go do is go watch John Lone Eagle. He plays here every year. Uh, authentic and Native American music. Uh, he plays here, he plays at the Ruffoot Lake Arts and Crafts Fest too. And always a favorite, so we'll start off with that. I know for sure that I have that one. a lot of moving. Um, and so if you cut this end off and you cut some of these bits off, it'll actually make some musical noises and they would use these to make certain calls and stuff like that. So you'd see like a <sighs> stuff like that. Really
these, all three of these are actually copper. These are more fresh huh. uh, pieces of copper right here. Uh, but this, over time, copper sort of oxidizes right. and forms this green film over the entire surface of it. That's why you see a lot of old statues made out of copper uh -huh. turn green over time. That's uh, because they build up this green layer. That's really cool. Over the top of it. And that's actually the metal itself. Uh, it's kind of like rust, but not really. Yeah. Um, in the same way normal metal rusts, copper oxidizes. Oxidizes. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Are you having fun today? Yeah, definitely. I haven't been to an Archeo Fest since I was like 12. Oh, okay. um, so I'm really happy to be here. It's kind of a surreal experience, actually being like a part of the thing yeah. that I, little Ethan ran around at. <laughs> That's neat. <laughs> But the posters are free. I have poster sleeves. If you guys are interested in taking some with you, I can roll them up for you, um, as well as the report. So please take as much as you want. That's a frog effigy ball. It's really And that's what was left. So it's interesting. I feel like I've seen that image before, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I have. Frog it. effigy balls are pretty common, oh, okay. as well as fish um, oh, yeah. effigy balls. Because okay. they make these bowls to store food in. Um, right. So those are pretty common. You actually, there are some inside the museum, I believe. Oh, okay. You walk around and find a, a dub FUG bowl. Yeah. Really neat. Now we'll take a walk through the museum. I know very little about the Woodland Indians, so I'll just let the displays speak for themselves. Now we're going on a halo hayride. To set aside places like this. Places to go to enjoy God's to enjoy, to enjoy God's creation, to exercise, to learn things about the history of the state and the like.
the Pensive Mounds recreational area, uh, visiting area, archaeological area, all of that, it has lots of attractions, and we're glad that you're here today. You'll notice that there are trails, that there's a museum, that there are features that give us information about our state's history. One of the features that you'll notice is a big hill behind you. The family that owned this land when the state bought it to set it aside for historical and recreational use uh, was named Saul. 85, that's close enough. It's about 95 feet tall from where the base of it is to the top. It used to be, the archaeologists think it used to be about 100 feet tall. Have you been up to there? How many of you have been to the top of Sol's Mountain? Wow! There are 122 steps that you took to get up there. Okay, so right now it's 90 feet tall. Where'd that 10 extra feet go? He wrote, okay, he wrote, took 10 feet away. Um, how long do you think, how long ago do you think the mound was built? The people that lived here at that time, they're called Rook, Woodlands Indians. About how long ago did they build it? Actually, 2,000 years ago. It took this man was built about the time that Jesus Christ walked on the face of the earth. It took, archaeologists think it took about a hundred years to build the man. Now, did they have a lot of bulldozers and the like? No. They had to use baskets to carry the dirt and dump it on top of other dirt. And dump it and dump it. It took a hundred years to build this man. The mounds that we'll see within the park were the archaeologists thought were used mostly for ceremonial purposes, for celebration, for things. Uh, when they dug into mounds, they found very, very few bones. What do you think it meant that there were few or no bones to be found on this site? This probably wasn't an area where a large city lived, okay? This is probably a gathering area. And in fact, the thought is that once a year, or maybe twice a year, tribes from far away would come. And what would they do when lots of people showed up? What's that? Okay, they would have festivals or family gatherings or celebrations or contests. Augie has something to say. I think why we're here is because we're here to learn. Alright. When when they when the folks came, it six it seemed they had a rule that there were to be no fighting. This wasn't a place where a war was conducted. This was a peaceful gathering. And from the top of that mound they evidently the Native Americans cleared a lot of the area around the mound. And it could be observed from that group. So that whenever activities were carried on in the fields, people on top, I'll call them the muckety muck, the higher up, whatever, the chiefs, they could see where their tribe was how their tribe was behaving and doing. What are some, they, they may have had contests, okay? What are some contests that we have? I don't think we're much different as people than people 2,000 years ago. So we have athletic contests. They probably had some contests with the ball. It might not have been the football or soccer ball or baseball that we associate with a particular game. But they probably had games like that. They probably had contests, like who could race the fastest, who could throw a spear the farthest, the most accurate, or shoot the bow and arrow. They may have, and in fact, if you go to the museum and look at the, the, the displays, 
you'll find artifacts that have been unearthed from the park. It indicates that people from the Great Lakes, from the Northeast, from the Gulf Coast, from the Southwest team, maybe once, maybe twice a year, to gather here, and they would bring with them our, their own treasured items that they could trade. Now, I've lived for 40 years to keep them in, uh, not to be exploited, so people can't go out and dig up material and get their own artifacts. It's supposed to be that good. But uh, the part that's a little bit of money from the hay that's cut, and very little. There is no camping on the park. Other parks have camping or the whole thing or swimming or whatever. Okay. I'm, I'm being distracted here. <laughs> climb Saul's Mound. There is, we can do this. We just hiked about 35 miles in the Smokies. We're ready. Let's look at the storyboard here. It's 72 feet high. Here's the view from the top of the mound. Get this nice observation deck up here. If you know these people, or these people, today, or these people, feel free to smack their hands for us. Yeah. And that's it. Thanks for coming with us. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit the like. Be sure to subscribe. And we'll see you next time.